Hello, welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 107 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about consuming custom events of the calendar user control, understanding the importance of checking if the event is null before actually raising the event. We skip discussing about this when we are discussing about raising custom events for the calendar user control. To get the most out of this video, I strongly recommend to watch parts 104 to 106 from the ASP.NET video series and parts 36 to 39 from the c -sharp video series. For your convenience, I have included the link to ASP.NET and c -sharp video series here. First, let's understand how we actually hook up the click event handler to the click event of the standard ASP.NET button control. So here on this project, we have this web form 2 where we have this button control. And this is our calendar user control that we have created in the previous session. So in the code behind file, look at this. When I click the button control, you know, button 1 underscore click, you know, this method gets called. And then look at that. We are printing the selected date within the calendar user control. So obviously, when I click this, look at that. As soon as I click the button, you know, that event handler method, which is button 1 underscore click, is called. And then it's printing the selected date within the calendar user control. So the important point to understand is how does the calendar user control knows it has to call this method when the click event happens? Okay, that's specified within the ASPX page. So we are using this on click attribute to tell, you know, call this button one underscore click method when that event happens. Okay, now can't we do this in code? Absolutely, we can do that in code as well. Look at this. If I remove this one, you know, this declaration from the ASPX, and then if I run this project and click the button control, nothing happens. And we understand why is that? Because the button control doesn't know uh, which method to invoke when the click event happens because you removed that association. Now let's look at how to do the same thing within code. To do that within code, I can use button one dot click. So when the click event, look at the lightning bolt symbol there. So click is an event. So when the click event happens, look at that. Now dot click, press space, and then plus equals. As soon as we do that, you know, Visual Studio is intelligent enough to, you know, to know that it's going to use this event handler delegate. Okay, look at that. It's it's using a delegate called event handler to to register a function with name button one underscore click. Okay, so button one underscore click is the method that needs to be called when this click event happens on this button one control. And how are we doing that? Using event handler delegate. Okay, and look at the signature of this event handler method. It has got a void written type and then uh, two parameters of type object and event args. Okay, and then look at the signature of the event handler delegate itself. It has a void written type and then two parameters of type object and event args. So the signature of the delegate matches the signature of the event handler method to which it is pointing. Okay, that's why delegates are actually called type safe function pointers. Okay, type safe because the signature of the delegate matches the signature of the function to which it is pointing to. Okay, and then another important thing to point, you know, keep in mind since these are function, I mean, these are called as function pointers. Why? Because when this event happens, you know, this delegate gets invoked. And look at this: to the constructor of this delegate, we are actually passing in the name of the function. So this function gets invoked when this, de you know, when this delegate is invoked. So obviously, when the click event happens, this function, this event handler method gets called, and and that is through the delegate. Okay, that's why delegates are called function pointers. And another point in the previous session, uh, we discussed about this as well. Delegates signature is much similar to that of a function signature. So if you look at the signature of the event handler delegate here, it's essentially same as that of the event handler method that we have here. Okay, and then obviously with a delegate keyword within the declaration. Okay, now, Along the same lines, you know, we have this calendar user control that we have been working with in the previous session. And if you remember, in the previous session, we have created an event for this calendar user control. What is that event? Calendar visibility changed event. Okay. Now, again, in the previous session, we discussed that. What are events? Events are variables of type delegates with an event keyword in front of them. So calendar visibility changed. What is this? This is a variable of type calendar visibility changed event handler. What is calendar visibility changed event handler? That's a delegate. Okay, so that's the delegate that we have created here. 
and look at the signature of this delegate here. It has a void written type and then two parameters of type send uh, object and calendar visibility changed event args. Now I want to hook up an event handler to this event calendar visibility changed event of this calendar user control. So let's see how to do that. So just like button one control, um, you know, the ID of our calendar user control is calendar user control one dot. What's the name of the event? Calendar visibility changed. Look at that. That's an event. How do we know that La the lightning bolt symbol indicate that? And look at this. As soon as I select that and then press space and then type plus equals, look at Visual Studio smart enough to know that calendar visibility changed event is actually you know, it's a variable of type calendar visibility changed event handler delegate. Okay, and it's using that delegate. Look at that. When when I press tab, look at that. It's automatically generated that, uh, generated the delegate declaration. And then when I press tab again, it generated that method also for me, the method signature for me. Okay, so now what are we doing here? Uh, let's put protected in the method declaration here so that it, it looks similar to the button click event handler. And look at this. Look at the signature of this event handler method. The signature here, it, it returns wide and two parameters of type object and calendar visibility event args. Okay, now if you look at that delegate, the signature of this function actually matches the signature of this delegate, void written type and two parameters. Okay, so it's very similar. And what we want to do here, another important point to keep in mind here, look at this calendar visibility changed event args object. We are using this object. Okay, so now when I use that object, I can see that is calendar visible. Okay, so what I basically want to do is I want to print a message on the web form when that event happens. And I want to let the user know that whether the calendar is visible or not. So I'm going to send this message back to the user calendar visible is equal to since that is a boolean property let's con uh, convert that to string and then display that look at that that's it so now when we run this and when we click on the calendar visible you know on the image button to change the visibility of the calendar look at that calendar visible is equal to true because the calendar is visible when i click on the image button again calendar visible is equal to false similarly when i select the date calendar visible is equal to false because the calendar is not visible okay so it's such I mean it's very similar to how we actually hook up uh, event handlers to the events of standard ASP.NET controls okay now most people feel these events and delegates are complex because there are several moving parts look at this at this point you should you, you might have understood why we actually created this class calendar visibility changed event args in the previous session when we were discussing about raising custom events okay from the calendar user control we have created this class so what's the use of this class because this class is going to contain that event data which we want to retrieve in the event handler okay and what we do just before we are raising the event within the user control we are creating an instance of that object calendar visibility changed event args and then look at this when the cell when we select a date in the calendar control we turn the visibility of the calendar to false and then we are passing that value to the constructor of this class and then we are passing that you know event data when this event is raised on calendar visibility changed and then this this object is now received in the event handler method and we are using the property to find out whether the calendar is visible or not okay so so basically now it should be clear you know about these different moving parts that we're using within events and delegates once you understand these moving parts it, they should be fairly straightforward okay so to register an event handler method we use plus equals and to unregister that we use minus equals Look at that. Here I am using minus equals. And obviously, if I run this project now, I registered an event handler method and immediately I unregistered that. So when I click on the image button, nothing happens when the calendar uh, visibility changed event is raised because, because there is no event handler method. Okay, because you registered it using plus equals and you unregistered that using minus equals. That's the reason. Okay, now another important point to keep in mind is that, uh, you know, you have to register, look at this, the event handlers, 
need to be registered before the event is raised. Now we are doing the registration within the page load event. Okay, and page load event happens before uh, the actual calendar visibility changed event is raised. When is the calendar visibility changed event raised? This event is raised when we click on this image button. Okay, meaning on the post back. Post back event happens after page load event. Okay, so by in the page load event we are registering an event handler method, and the event is happening after the method is registered. So uh, the control knows which method to invoke when that event happens. But also remember, this page has page pre-render event. Let me copy this, and then within the page pre-render let's register the event handler instead of page load. So I'm removing that registration code from page load event and moving that to page pre-render. Okay, and let's call this page pre-render. And when does the page pre-render event happens? It happens after the page load event. Okay, now by the time we are registering the event handler to the event, the event has already been raised, but there was no method listening to that event. So obviously, you know, we don't have an event handler and nothing happens when that event actually was raised. So when I click this, nothing happens. Look at that. It doesn't print any message. That's because you're doing the registration after the event is actually raised. That's why keep in mind the event handlers need to be registered before the event is raised. And you can do the registration either in the page load, page initialization, or page pre-initialization. Now I am doing the registration in the page load event, which happens before uh, the event is raised. Look at that. It gets handled. OK. Now we have seen how to you know, raise and handle, e I mean, we have to handle events within the code behind file. Now can't we do that just like how you know, for the button click, we were able to do that within the code behind file. I mean, within the ASPX page as well. So for the button, I can say on click is equal to, which is the method that I want to call button one underscore click. Along the same lines, can't I do that for the calendar user control? You can do that as well. So we have this on calendar visibility change. So when that happens, I want to invoke this method. Okay, look at that. I'm registering the event handler now within the ASPX page. But if you want to programmatically do that based on some conditions, then you can do that in the code as well. Um, we have discussed about that. So now if I press this, it's going to work exactly the same way, except that this time the registration is done in the HTML instead of doing that in the code. So it works the same way. Okay, now another thing that we need to talk about is um, What's the importance of checking if the event is null before actually raising the event? Okay, now, so we have an event handler method here registered. Okay, now, if you remember in the previous session, we used this method, protected method, to actually raise the event. And within the method, we are actually checking if the event is not null before raising the event. Now, if I comment this here, let's comment that. So what happens if I don't check for null? Now look at this. I'm not checking for null. And on the web form, you know, for that event, there is an event handler listening. OK, so now when I press Control F5, run the project, click the button, it works as expected without any issues. OK, let the page load up. So I click that. Look at that. Calendar visible is equal to true. Visible is equal to false. Fine. Now let's say there is nobody registered for that event. In the sense, we don't have any event handler method listening for that event. Now I run this. The page loads are fine. But then when I click on the image button, the event gets raised. OK. But then there is nobody listening for that event. So basically, we get a runtime error. Look at that. I click that button, object null reference exception. Look at this at this point when it's trying to raise the event. There's no one listening. OK, the event is basically null. That's why we get this null reference exception. That's why it's always a good practice to avoid these runtime exceptions. So showing, I mean, throwing these runtime exceptions doesn't make any sense. If there is no event handler method, nothing happens. That's it. You don't want to throw a null reference exception. And how can we avoid that? By checking for null. That's why you know it's actually very helpful uh, if you use this null check. 
Okay, so now if I go ahead and run this, obviously in spite of not having an event handler method, I don't get any uh, runtime error. It simply does nothing. Okay, it doesn't show that yellow screen of death, null reference exception. Look at that, nothing happens, that's it. But on the other hand, if there is an event handler method, that gets notified and whatever you specified in that event handler method to be done, that will be done. Okay. In the next video, you know, we'll discuss about raising another custom event from the calendar user control. My aim is basically to make sure that these events and, uh, you know, delegates concepts are clear. So in this session, uh, we have seen how to raise the calendar visibility changed event and how to handle that. In the next session, we'll create another, you know, custom event for the calendar user control, probably a calendar date selected or something like that. And then we'll see how to consume that. With these two examples, I hope delegates and uh, events and delegates should be fairly simple to understand. If you like this video, please click the like button, you know, at the bottom of this video that you can see. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.